June 6, Monday. Around here in Illinois, we're actually getting a spring. It is springtime right now, chronologically. Summer doesn't uh, begin, I think, until the 21st, I believe. What has happened here in the past couple of years here in Illinois, we went from winter to summer with no spring. Land of extremes, but we've been getting a spring here thus far. It's, it's dreary, it's cool, it's actual springtime, praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, before we start this video, I, I, I have to share with you an email that I received from a, from a beloved young brother who will one day be a fine preacher. You watch. He will be a preacher of his own tongue, but he will be a fine preacher one day. He's taking his time. He's waiting. He's waiting. That's good. That's good. But I want to share this with you, and I'm only going to add just a morsel to this, This because this was really good. This was really good. And um, I took this as a rebuke, as a rebuke. I want to share this with you. And I have informed this dear young brother that I was going to do this. He has not responded to me yet, but he knows who he is. You know who you are. Uh, quoting verbatim from this email. I forgot to put salt in my salad today, and it was good for nothing. I could not eat it. Is our Lord pleased with us? When we are not salty. Hmm. Remember, brethren, if we are not salty, then we are good for nothing. Now, you try to look up salty in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. <coughs> salty is not in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But a definition of salty that I came across uh, from the Oxford language thing is it's an adjective tasting of containing or preserved with salt. And that's the thing about salt in the scripture. Um, salt is a preservative, but salt also burns. Okay. Salt was used as a preservative, you know, to preserve food, especially for the time of famine that is coming upon us, but salt is a preservative. Salt burns. You ever had salt in a wound? In your, in your fingers or anything like that? Yeah. All right. Informal. Tough. Aggressive. Informal United States, I'm, uh, I'm assuming. Angry or resentful, especially in response to a defect to a defeat or disappointment mm. Mm. and a quote here is she was salty because I didn't go with her to her senior prom mm. okay but that is the defi uh, dictatorial definition of salty that I found uh, you can just put it in salty online in your Google search and you'll come up with this exact thing and this one has a little graph on the bottom of it of when the term salty was being used and whatnot. So very, very interesting. But yes, yeah, salty. Salty. And uh, hold on, let me get back to that. Okay. But yes, our brother said, I forgot to put salt in my salad today. And it was good for nothing. I could not eat it. <coughs> Is our Lord pleased with us when we are not salty? Remember, brethren, if we are not salty, then we are good for nothing. Tough or aggressive, showing tough love, being salt of the earth. And this brother, of course, of course, mark of a, of a true brother. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. I don't need to, uh, you will need your scriptures, obviously. Scriptures. Oh, scriptures. That's just referring to the Old Testament. 
Okay, what about Word of God? That's, uh, okay, the Word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Remember there? Remember there, friend? Yeah, yeah. My wife said, yeah, um, the word Bible is not in the scriptures. I'm a babe, and I even know that, right? <laughs> and, um, but, okay, the word Bible is not in the scriptures. But scripture is in the Bible. <laughs> oh, that that's slick. That's, that's, that's slick. That's smooth. Smooth operator. That's slick. That borders along almost along the lines as yea hath God said. That's slick. That's slick. But okay, about being salty. That 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 one's slick. That's they like, ooh. That's cute. That's cute. But Matthew 5, 13 through 16. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, Wherewith shall it be called shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. But to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mark 9, 50. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Luke 14, 34 and 35. <coughs> salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And then Colossians chapter 4, 2 through 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. In every occurrence within the scriptures? No. It's defined by the context. But our Lord is specific in Job 28, 28. The fear of the, and he said unto man, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? All right? Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, those that are without, that are not of the church of God, church of the living God, or, or a saint. Okay? Redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace. Season with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. <clears throat> That's good, isn't it? And I just, I, I just wanted to add uh, Jude, verses twenty one on to verse twenty five. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, that blessed hope of him redeeming us, the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? And of some, have compassion, making a difference. When someone is truly broken, repentant, having godly sorrow, okay? And the Lord will guide you into that situation. You don't, when someone is truly broken, truly, truly broken, <coughs> at their wit's end of themselves, you could say, and beyond just worldly sorrow, you, you can tell. You can tell, okay? You don't need to go to Romans 3, 10 through 18, 
Uh, you don't need to drill upon them that they are not worthy, that they are not good, that they... No. When someone is true, you, you have compassion. Okay? And others save with fear to the high-minded, to the arrogant. I'm saved just because I believe. And skipped over repentance. Yeah. To the haughty, to the high-minded. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. <coughs> now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and maj majesty, dominion and power now and ever. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? I, I, I personally thought, oh, one second, brethren. All right. All right. Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? This video, I'm going to be answering an allegation. <laughs> More like an accusation. Very smooth. Very smooth. The uh, allegation about um, striving about words to no profit. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the, here's the accusation. I personally will not use the term Christian. I will not use it. If you are of the church of living God, if you are the, uh, saved of the church of God, a dear saint, and you want to use the term Christian, fine. Okay, fine. I have never, I have never made it a issue of salvation. It's an, it's an issue of distinction. Okay. Uh, boop, hello. You, you know where we're going. And I'm, I'm not addressing an individual with this. You know, you realize we are towards the end of this dispensation. We are in the last days. Okay. Uh, have you ever witnessed to someone and you bring up the fact that you're a Christian and it's like, well, there are so many Christians. What, what Christian are you? Uh, most people, when you tell them you're a Christian, they think of Catholic or Charismatic or even a Calvinist, one of the three C's. And then you got to spend all this time trying to debate with them, in a sense, the difference between you being a true Christian and that I, my thing is, number one, we never refer to ourselves as Christians, okay? That is provable and documentable within Scripture. Okay? That's what the world called us. Yes, it's stuck. I understand that. I also understand that it's not going any, anywhere. But see, the whole thing with this and myself personally is 1 John chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. <clears throat> 1st, <clears throat> uh, please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we are going to be examining today. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a, a skipping groove. Check me out to make sure I'm not lying to you and make sure I'm telling you the truth. Okay, follow me along. Come on. But with me personally, it's John, 1st uh, John 3 verses 18 on to verse 21. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. See, you read the book of uh, 1 John, it's all about we who are of the church of God, who are saved, born again, converted. It's all about us knowing something. Knowing. Not only in our minds, but in our hearts. Okay? To know God, the true God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. Then have we confidence toward God. Okay? And that's the thing. Uh, for example, the Antichrist, 
is not in Scripture. It isn't. The son of perdition is, okay, the Antichrist is used as a title. Um, that spirit of Antichrist, he is Antichrist, is a description. The title of that man of sin, the son of perdition, <clears throat> okay, the abomination that maketh desolate, those are actual titles of the man who's going to come along during the time of Jacob's trouble, looking like the Roman Catholic Jesus. And you know what? I bet you during the time of Jacob's trouble, oh, I bet you there's going to be all kinds of Christians. <clears throat> because remember, that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? He's going to look like the Roman Catholic Jesus. Okay? He's going to be doing lying signs and wonders. Okay? All right? He is. He is. Okay? And he is going to be the one to usher in extreme Roman Catholicism. And surprise, surprise, Roman Catholics are Christians. Southern Baptists are Christians. T.D. Jakes, he's a Christian. Okay? Some of these weird Baptists, they are Christians. And where I'm coming from, and those, and those of you know this, <clears throat> where I'm coming from is full circle, Jack. In the beginning, we never referred to ourselves as that. And seeing that we are approaching the last days, well, excuse me, we are in the last days, the last days before the redemption of the purchased possession, erroneously referred to as the rapture. Okay, Rapture isn't in scripture, but why do you still use that? See, picking and choosing or going full, uh, full out? Hmm? And you know, like uh, for an example, as far as Church of the Living God, my wife recently, when uh, we, we've been going through this medical garbage with her and her hip and that kind of stuff, they asked her what religion she was. And it's, she's like, Church of the Living God. And they, they marked that. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's not as difficult as you think. But see, the accusation is that I'm being subvertive. I've never made it a salvation issue. Oh, in a mocking way, I speak of Christians, yes, because look what Satan has done to the word Christian. Words are important, dear friend. Words do have meaning. And look at what Satan has done to that word Christian. And look within Scripture who labeled us Christians first. Wasn't us. It's the world. Okay, and look at what Satan has done to the term Christian. Yes, at one time in history, the term Christian absolutely could have been a, a lot more better used and more pure than it is today. But see, we are in the last days before the redemption of the purchased possession. My angle is where I come from is, hey, don't associate me with what Christian is. Look on YouTube. Oh, there are a lot of Christians. But very few are of the church of God. That's where I come from. And as we just looked at in John 3, verses 18 on verse 21, the Lord convicted me of that. And I'm not dropping it. I'm not dropping it. Is, and there are those out there, another accusation that I'm making that the big B. -all. No, I'm not. How are you? You're saved? How, how are you saved? Were you broken? Did you have godly sorrow? Did you have fear of the Lord? And in that fear, did you call upon his name? Hmm? Hmm. Uh, are you eternally secure? Uh, are you going to be redeemed? Those are the doctrines which I preach and teach. Okay? But as far as the thing as Christian... Okay? If you're saved, you want to call yourself a Christian? Fine. I've never made it a salvation issue. I don't say you have to do it. I believe that we ought to. Absolutely. But if you're not going to, I've never made it a salvation issue there, dear friend. Okay? Okay? I never have. But see, the accusation is I'm being subvertive. Hmm? 
<clears throat> There'll be a, this, uh, several videos in the description box. But the one by uh, Nesh Bezman, Bezmanov, I can't remember his name, about subversion, about how the media uses subversion, okay, a form of it. <coughs> but we're also going to look in the scriptures. The scriptures. <laughs> now, I, I'm, using a, I'm using the companion Bible, okay, just to use something else, but the scriptures. See, this says Holy Bible. Okay, this says Holy Bible. So does the NIV, the ESV, the New King James Version. Have you ever witnessed to someone and they, they bring up the question about the Bible? Hmm. Hmm. Have you ever uh, witnessed to a Muslim hmm? about the issue of the Bible? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can say, well, your Quran has many variations. So, But the point is, see, it's about distinction. And and that that was that's that's oh yeah you're right Bible isn't in the scriptures but scripture is in the Bible and Bible means a collection of, oh that was that's that's smooth that's slick that border that's tippy toe yea hath God said that that's good that's good nonetheless but oh okay you want to get technical. Scripture's only referring to the usage of the Old Testament because they didn't have the completed canon then. Okay, you want to get that technical? Okay, you want to go like that? Fine. The Word of God then. You're going to call the NIV the Word of God? Hmm? Hmm. <laughs> Some do. Okay? Just because you don't judge a book by its cover, dear friend. Yeah, that says Holy Bible on it. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. What saith the scripture? And Paul, within this dispensation, used that what saith the scripture. If anything, Holy Bible is a what? Is an adjective describing the scriptures. My angle is distinction. Because most people uh, you, that you witness to are not reading the scriptures. <clears throat> and you bring up to them about the Bible... Happened many a times with me uh, before the Lord convicted me. It's like, hey, that's not in there. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, when you bring it up to people, they're like, well, which one? And, and, and witnessing the people, it's like, you mean the Bible? It's like, no, sir. No, sir. I mean the scriptures. And, of course, I always carry the authorized version with me wherever I go, even out to get my mail, okay? It's like, no, these, these are the scriptures. Well, it says the Holy Bible. Yeah, it does, but it doesn't say that within the pages of the scriptures. Okay, this is uh, this is um, an adjective, if anything. The definite, definitive article is the scriptures. Okay. Now, I have never made it a salvation issue. If someone wants to refer to the scriptures as the Bible, I really think you should call it the scriptures. Why? Distinction. Distinction. See, the distinction between true and false is so blurred because of what Satan has done. We, I believe, and have been convicted by when it comes to our words that we should be as close to the scriptures as possible. You don't use the excuse, well, lost people don't understand that you're talking about the catching away, so you shouldn't use rapture, but I'm going to use rapture because the <laughs> Or you get all bent out of shape about using the word human because human is not in the scripture, but yet it's not a big deal. It, what? 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 You know, either or. Choose a side, okay? And again, <clears throat> I've never made it a salvation issue. Never. You'll hear me say, oh yeah, you're a mere Christian, okay? You're a mere Christian. Oh yeah, you'll hear me knock what Christian has become, okay? But see, I'm not afraid of saying that because we never, we never called ourselves that. Okay? And think about this. After the redemption of the purchased possession, you know, the body of Christ, there's another one for you that's more scripturally accurate. 
okay? The body of Christ, okay? There are going to be a lot of Christians left behind. That man of sin, the son of perdition, okay, is going to be going forward, I believe, in a form of Christianity. Okay? And also, too, about the term Christian, have you ever spoken with truly saved, converted, born-again Jews? Well, that's for the Jews. They want to call themselves Messianic believers. You're not a Jew. You're right, but see, they got the right idea. Why is that? Because when you say Christian to a Jew, even to a saved Jew, what do they think of? They think of the Crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. Okay? They think about how they were poked with hot pokies to keep them awake while they're the Catholic Christians we're debating with them, trying to forcibly convert them. Is it a salvation issue? No. Is it an issue of distinction? Yes. And that's where I come from. That's where I come from. But now let's get to this about this, um, because the overall accusation, okay, if you want to use the term Christian, I, I know people who are saved, and I converse with them, they use the term Christian, and they use the term Bible, okay? I'm going to stick to what the Lord convicted me of, okay? And those of you who talk with me, you know that, you know? My wife, every once in a while, will slip, you know? I slip every once in a while, but uh, I'll like, I'll say this, like, remember, we're Christian, we're not Christians, baby. She's like, you're right, Church of God, you know? She's my bones and my flesh, Okay, she's mine. She belongs to me. I belong to her. That kind of thing. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. But I've never made it a salvation issue. And I've seen in comments when people talking about me, it's like that we have to. Look, you wanting to use the term Christian or Bible or uh, change life, and amen to that. Change life is not in Scripture. New creature is. New creature is. And fruits meet for repentance? That's in there. Yeah. But oh, you're, you're making a big deal out of it. Remember, reformed alcoholics have a changed life. <laughs> How far do we want to go with this? Oh, you're striving about words. Oh, am I? I'm all about distinction. That's not striving about words. We're going to see what striving about words really is in context of scripture, dear friend. So, but the overall accusation is subverting, subverting. So let's look up in scripture what it means to be subvertive, to subvert. First mention of the word subvert, there are several forms of it, and we're gonna look at every single one. There are not that many, okay? The first one appears in the Book of Lamentations. And we're going to get the context for this. We're going to be reading from verses 22 on to verse 36 in the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Please follow me along. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 on to verse 36. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Amen. You have today... What are you going to do with today? They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Yes. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Now, that could mean a chronological youth, being just a youth, you know, within the 20s or something. Or it could be uh, a youth in uh, terms of being a babe in Christ. Okay, could be, could be. And the Lord will save you and take you to heaven, but he's not going to remove you from all the consequences. Okay. He's not. That doesn't work like that. Okay? But, let's continue. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence, because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so, 
B, there may be hope. Now pay attention to these he's. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. He is filled with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever. But though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men. Afflict willingly or grieve the children of men. And this is where you can go to, what is it, Ezekiel chapter 18? Yes. Okay. Yes, God delighteth in mercy. God would rather be merciful. But see, there are some stiff-necked and stubborn people who are not going to receive God's grace or his mercy. They're going to boot the door out of the way and go up some other way. Okay. God wants all men to come to repentance and to be saved. But not everybody's going to. Salvation is there to be had at the cross. But you got to go on his terms, not your own. See, yes, God wants all people to be saved, but not everyone is going to be saved. God is not up there <laughs> weeping over those who reject him and spit on his scriptures, his word, and count the gospel and the blood of Christ as a light thing. Okay? No. You reject the gospel. You are an enemy of God. You, you're, his wrath is against you. Okay? There ain't no innocent people in hell, dear friend. Okay? Yeah, God is not up in heaven. Oh, I gotta send this guy who hates me and hated the scriptures and hated everything that was done on the cross and persecute my body. Oh, I gotta send him to hell. No. No. No, God is not like that. His, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, okay? Okay? I know a lot of you struggle with that. <clears throat> but because we are told to be the salt of the earth, to have compassion, and also to save with fear, to preserve and to burn. That, that, brother, that was so, that was so beautiful. Was very meat, very meat. And it came at the appropriate time. But let's continue. Now, let's get to this definition, one of the definitions of the word subvert. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. Crush, to hold down, to suppress. Kind of like the subversion that the Jesuits are doing in the media right now. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. Oh, so in subverting, to crush, to keep under... To turn people away from the Lord. Hmm. And that's the accusation of me. That's against me. That I'm turning people away from the Lord when I'm quoting the scriptures, trying to, uh, you know, point you to Jesus Christ, the Christ of the scriptures. But yet I'm subverting people. Smooth, smooth, smooth like glass, buddy. Yeah. To subvert a man in his cause. The Lord approveth not. So, subvert. What does subvert mean? From verse 34 on to verse 35. Or actually verse uh, 32. Subverting causes grief. Subverting is a type of affliction. Subvert means to crush under his feet. Subvert means to turn aside onto lies. Are you saying that I'm lying? That we, that we never refer to ourselves as Christians within the scriptures? <sighs> See, you, 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 don't go, you don't go over that line, do you? You go to 1 Peter, and the uh, context is, it's better to suffer as a Christian than a murderer as a thief. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, yeah, there are many people who are going to suffer as Christians. Labeled that unto them by the world, not we ourselves, see. See, smarter than that. Smooth, very smooth. So that is a meaning of subversion, to subvert. And with that, uh, Yuri Bezmenov, that's what it is. Uh, watch that video on subversion. He talks about how the Russians subvert, uh, subvert America through media and stuff like that, but it's actually the Jesuits, okay? Watch that. That's a really good video, okay? But, so we see that of subversion, okay? Now go to Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, 
okay? Words to no profit. Okay, you want to see some words to no profit? Okay, Church of God, Church of the Living God, dear saints, to get away from a term that Satan has poisoned and made lukewarm and ecumenical, that's, that's being subversive, that's a word of no profit. I, I, I beg to differ, sir. I beg to differ, sir. Oh, oh, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. It's not a salvation issue. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. It's a, it's a thing of distinction. It's a thing of distinction. We are supposed to be different. Okay? But Acts chapter 1. Here is a form of subversion. Okay? To turn aside a man... From the Lord, from the, what, what, what? I, I, we just went away from that. But in Lamentations, okay, as far as su to subvert, okay, come on, come on, let me get back there. <laughs> Lamentations chapter 3 again, <clears throat> verse 35, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. The rights that you do have are from the Lord. The right to, to breathe, the right to eat, those are from the Lord, okay? So to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High, comma, to subvert, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approveth not. So you see what, how subvert is defined by verses 32 on to verse 35, you see, and then you see the word subvert, verse mention of it. That's how subvert is defined in the first mention, okay? But note this in verse 35, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. Words to no profit, okay? Acts chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 2. And these uh, scriptures I'm going to be reading uh, in a rebuke to Mark the Messenger. That's going to be the next video, Lord willing. You need to rebuke that young man. Okay, I'm going to do it publicly. Name his name. Going to be salty. Brad, you said that you want we're supposed to be different and we shouldn't be doing that. And yes, I did. Yes, I did. And uh, my good friend from England, you can point out my hypocrisy all day. Uh, we, we won't get involved in your hypocrisy there, Mr. Perfect, because then again, you'll, you'll accuse of, us of doxing you. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was wrong. And there comes a time and a place where you are to name people. Especially in these last times, I never talked against naming people, but doing it as a form to, you know, oh, the big premiere, I'm going to, who's he going to name? Who's he going to name? I know, the one guy from Indiana, or, or wherever he was from, he, he would get like, oh, 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 almost, uh, you know, orgasmic about, who's he going to name? Who's he going to, no, no. We do it solemnly, Okay. And I've already named him, Mark the Messenger. Okay, I'm going to be rebuking that man uh, in a video. Okay, but not this video. But some of these scriptures, because of what he does, attacking the truth of the gospel, um, I'm going to be using these scriptures in an upcoming video again. But I'm going to be using them here. But as far as subverting, want to see a form of a worse no profit? And certain men came, which came down from Judea, taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem to, uh, unto the apostles and elders about this question. Hmm. About this question. How is that subverting? How is that subverting? You saying the law was subversion? No. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. And see, what they were doing is, there is basically, by being circumcised, you have to keep the law in order to be saved. Okay? And the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. So see, those people who are trying to bring you under the law, to keep things that not even they, and we're going to look at that, that not even they could keep? Hmm. Hmm. That's words to no profit. 
telling them you have to keep the law in order to be saved, to turn away a man from the right of the Lord or whatever, or what we looked in, to turn away from the truth. That is um, about words to no profit. Because we are not to keep the law today in order to be saved, stay saved, or stay right with God. The Ten Commandments, you couldn't keep them if you tried. You couldn't. Okay? Oh, wretched man that I am. Okay? The law, the, uh, the Ten Commandments are there to show you the perfect standards of God. And guess what, cousin? Even at your best, you couldn't keep it if you tried, even at gunpoint. Okay? Hence, the law is good and holy. Yes, because you know what sin is by the law. Yes. But it doesn't give you life because it only shows you how useless you are at your best state. So when you got someone coming around talking about you got to go under the law, those are words, words to no profit. Well, yeah, well, you might, well, you mean it doesn't profit, profit us to keep the law? Well, sure. But can you keep the law perfectly? Because it says in the book of James, if you break one law, you're done, broke it all. Okay? So what profit is it of you to keep something, to try to keep something perfectly that not even the Jew unto whom the law was given, that they couldn't even keep at their best. Hmm? See, that's, that's, that's scripturally, dear friend, words to no profit. Okay? Words to no profit. Okay? But uh, let's go to Titus. Let's go to Titus. Chapter 1. Or, uh, excuse me, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3, okay? Titus chapter 3, verses 8. Oh, uh, no, excuse me. Titus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11, okay? Titus chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Okay? We are to be different. But sometimes, you know, you got to be a little gruff. You got to have salt. You got to be salty. Sometimes with some of these people, you got to you gotta take the sword and smack them upside the head hard. Okay? Okay? Like we looked at in Jude. We have to do that sometimes. Okay? But after the kindness, but after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared. Death, burial, and resurrection. Christ and him crucified. Yes, okay? Not by works, the works of the law, of righteousness, which we, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, which are the works of the law, okay? But according to his mercy, he saved us. By grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmen, we are the workmanship of Christ in him, created for uh, good works, and I just messed up ten, uh, verse 10, Want, someone will put that in the comment section. That's what people do around here, <laughs> okay? But, okay, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewal, renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, grace through faith, we should be made heirs according to the hope of promise, uh, hope of eternal life. Excuse me. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. And it is absolutely a good thing to be, to speak as closely in line with scriptures. Then you might say, well, why don't you say thee and thou, thee, ye? And I do occasionally. I do. Why not? Why not speak in pure uh, uh, language of scripture with ye, thee, thine, spake? I do that occasionally. I do. I do. Okay? Why not? All right? But let's continue. 
But avoid foolish questions. Foolish questions. Fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So again, a foolish question is what? A question coming from the angle of there is no God. Okay? And genealogies and contentions. And contentions. I just lost my place. Okay? Verse 9. And strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. Okay? Unprofitable and vain. Okay? We are to contend for the faith. Okay? We are to contend for the faith. Okay? Which I do. Which you do. Okay? It's not fun. And the accusation is that you're fighting the wrong way. I'm fighting with the scriptures. That's not the wrong way, dear friend. Okay? But, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted, held down, and sinneth, being condemned of himself, subverted, crushed, turned aside from the Lord. And how are they subverted? Oh, by foolish questions, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law. Yeah. Yeah. That's someone who is subverted. As our culture here in America is subverted, turned away from God, suppressed, crushed by the media, by the Jesuits. Okay? That's true subverting. That is true... Um, um, words, uh, arguing about words to no profit. Okay? That is the true scriptural interpretation and definition of arguing about words to no profit, dear friend. Okay? Prove me wrong. Okay? Now, let's go back to Acts. Let's go back to Acts chapter 15. Okay? And let's read verses 8 on to verse 11, okay? People, Judaizers, were coming along saying, hey, you got to keep the law of Moses, trying to subvert people, okay? And in this dispensation, you don't keep the law to be saved, stay saved, or to be right with God. There are laws that we are to keep, and you look at that in Romans chapter 13, okay? Yes, yes, but the commandments, no. No, you couldn't do it even if you tried, Okay? And see, those who are for that, like that young Mark the Messenger, um, he doesn't understand what true grace is. He doesn't, because he's not broken, he's lost. But, totally different video, okay? But let's look now in Acts chapter 15, verses 8 to verse 11. Okay? Here's what the apostles said about going back under the law in this dispensation to those who are trying to subvert the church of God. Verses 8 on to verse 11. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. And this, this I'm going to read again for Mark the Messenger and his, rebuking that young man. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Couldn't bear the commandments. You couldn't keep them holy, perfectly, purely, even if you tried. Because if you break one of the commandments, you've broken them all. Okay? And they're saying, it's like, look, we couldn't, and we and this coming from the Jews, we couldn't you know we couldn't keep the law perfectly, okay? Only one could, and that just happened to be Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, who is able to do so because he's God the Father, okay? He kept what he gave on the men perfectly. We can't, and he's acknowledging it, okay? Okay. Verse eleven. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be saved even as they, uh, them, even as them, they, even as them. I can't even see that. Yeah, even as them, okay? Or is that a they? One second. Yes, even as they 
they, even as they. Yeah, um, I'm using this companion Bible just to use a different set of scriptures. See, that's what it says. Okay, I'm using this just to use a different set of scriptures. Um, and it's they uh, is in italics here, and it's hard to decipher. Okay, but yes, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Okay, so subverting is turning someone away from the truth of salvation, uh, the truth of God. That's what it is to subvert. And see, your accusation is that I'm turning away people from the truth. Very slick. Very smooth. Very smooth. Yeah. But now, verses 19 on to verse 26. Here in Acts chapter 15. Where... They're sending letters onto the disciples, both of Jews and Greeks. Okay, here's their final outcome about you know this is the Jerusalem co uh, conference, you could say. Okay, uh, Acts chapter fifteen, verses eighteen, verses nineteen, on to verse twenty-six. Wherefore my sentence is, sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, okay, and from fornication and from things strangled, and from blood. Look at that verse. Pollution of idols, Catholic, and from fornication, ecumenicalism, the love gospel, and from things strangled and from blood, strangled, Calvinism. Oh, isn't that interesting, huh? Yeah. For Moses of old time hath him in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church, with all the Christians, right? <laughs> no, with the whole church, to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch, with Paul and Barnabas, namely, Judas surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren sent greeting unto the brethren which are of the which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and in Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words subverting your souls saying that they had to keep the law i'm not subverting anyone's soul dear friend by t uh, telling people and holding to the standard of scripture oh i'm fighting the wrong way or i'm making a big deal out of uh, something that shouldn't be look at all the christians out there today friend look at all the bibles out there today friend hmm? That's where I stand. And you know what? I'm not budging. Hey, like I said, it's not a salvation issue. I'm not going to break fellowship with someone if they're going to persist in using the term Christian or a Bible. I'm not going to break fellowship with someone. Okay? I'm not. If they're truly saved, born again, converted, they are my brother or my sister. We might not be like-minded, hence we might not be able to get along and have fellowship, you know, but I'm not, you know, if th that said person comes to me, there's something with a prayer request or wanting to talk, I'm not going to reject that, okay? I'm not. I'm not, okay? I'm not, all right? But see, subverting your souls, telling them that they have to do contrary to the grace of God and do that which they themselves couldn't even do. That is subversion, according to Scripture. That is words to no profit, dear friend. Oh, let's continue, okay? Saying ye must be circum... Let's read verse 24 again. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, 
to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. So see, that's subverting, turning people away from the truth. I'm not turning people away from the truth, dear friend. Okay, as your allegation and accusation is. Okay. Okay. Now let's go to the big one, to Second Timothy. Words to no prophet. Second Timothy, chapter two. Second Timothy, chapter two. Verses eleven on to verse nineteen. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, dead to the world and dead to ourselves, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And every time we come to this, I have to say, this is not talking about salvation. This is talking about a blessing or grace. Okay, his grace is sufficient for us, yes. But you deny him in a public manner or deny him when he tells you to do something, he will deny you grace, mercy, um, provision, okay? That's what it means. It's not meaning your salvation, okay? And some like to say that, you know, you got to keep the law because see, if you deny him, um, he's going to deny you salvation. No, it's not talking about salvation. Verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. And see, your accusation is that I'm subverting the hearers. Uh, no, we already looked. Subverting of the hearers is those who are trying to take, take people away from the truth of the gospel. From the truth of Christ. Me wanting to stick to the pure, what we call ourselves, is not subverting people. Okay? Uh, referring to the scriptures as the scriptures is not subverting people, dear friend. Smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. The subverting is turning away from the truth of the gospel. That's what this means. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them for the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to, the, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, uh, words to no profit, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. And right here, here's more words to no profit, dear friend. Okay? And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Right there, that's the subversion. That's the words to no profit that Paul is referring to, dear friend. Okay? And verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Okay? Do you want to see another? Here, uh, go to 1 Thessalonians, uh, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? You want to see subversion in action? Not from Paul, but what he is addressing, what he is addressing. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now, I be, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. People were doing that. Why? How they were striving about words, no profit, saying that it is at hand, subverting people. Okay, saying that the day of Christ is at hand. They were subverting people. 
They were they were what striving about words. What is that? Uh, what is that? Um, they were striving. They uh, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. Okay, sticking with strip scriptural terms is not subverting the hearers, dear friend. Okay, it's not. But when you go along saying that the resurrection is past already or that you got to keep the law, that is the subversion. That is striving about words to no profit. Okay? Because how does it profit you if the resurrection is already passed or the day of the Lord is at hand? Huh? Huh? You see? Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away, a falling away first. Falling away first. They were of us, but they were not all of us. But they were made manifest that they were not all of us. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the appropriate title for the one who is inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, and probably calling everyone Christian. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay? Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Warned about people who were subverting. Okay. Now go back to 2 Timothy chapter... Uh, no, we, we, we finished that up. We finished that up, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Beg your pardon. Uh, and now go to Titus chapter 1. And here's where we're going to finish this. Titus chapter 1, verses 9 and verse 11. Hmm. Holding fast, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine to both exhort and to convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, who strive about words to no profit. Okay? Vain talkers. Okay? whose mouths must be stopped, who subverts whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. And as been charged against me, as led by the Canadian, um, that I'm doing this for filthy lucre's sake, when my stance and what I preach about causes me to lose support, <laughs> No, I would do this whether or not um, we received any gift, okay? Because this is what I've been called to do, okay? Words to no profit are not, is not uh, adhering to scriptural standards, but... Subverting is trying to get people away from the truth of the gospel within this dispensation, usually which adheres to speaking against um, once saved, always saved, going back under the law that you got to keep the Ten Commandments. Um, you can try, but you can't keep them completely. And what does James tell us? If you break one, you break them all. Okay? Very smooth, very slick there, friend. Very smooth, very slick. At least my enemies come right out and accuse me both facedly. At least they do. At least they do. So, and that I, I had to, I had to before we continue on with this week with the things that the Lord has uh, wants me to do. I, I had to address this. I had to address this. I have to be salty and address these things. Okay. 
You want to call yourself a Christian? Fine. I don't believe you should. I do not personally adhere to that, but it's not a salvation issue, and I never said it was. If you want to call the scriptures the Bible, <laughs> Bible is not in the scripture, but the scriptures in the Bible. Oh, smooth as glass, buddy. Wow. Yeah, that that that's cute. That's cute. Yeah, tiptoe, yay, half God's head. <laughs> that's good. I like that. I like that. And, very proud of you. That's good. <laughs> yeah. If you want to call this a Bible because it says so, but you don't judge a book by its cover, okay, fine. It's not a salvation issue. The Lord convicted me personally of these things. And when you look at what is generically called Christian and generically called a Bible, it's about distinction. Okay? I'm not going to waste my time in witnessing onto the lost, trying to describe to them how I'm a true Christian as a verse to all those who call themselves Christian. No, I'm not going to waste the time. What am I going to do? I'm going to jettison that term and go with what we called ourselves at the beginning, the church of God, the church of the living God. And guess what? When put into practice, it works! Okay? It works! It's not as hard as you think! And it's not subversive. Okay? It's not subverting people. Okay? I'm not going to waste time. You know, and, you know, I'm going to make it straight up. You know, which is heaven! You know, that it's, it's a Bible. No, it's the scriptures. Okay? There's a difference. Okay, the NIV and those, those are a collection of books, a collection of books of men. Whereas the scriptures, this is, yes, this is a collection of books of God. But within the pages that has on the cover, now this is the companion Bible, okay? Uh, within the pages of the text itself, which is important, never refers to itself that way. Or like I said, you want to get really technical about it? Sure. Well, the scriptures is what they were called the Old Testament. But, uh, but today, for the New Testament, we can call them the Bible. Then why is it in, why is it in there? Well, Biblos, uh, why, uh, the King James Version, the authorized version, is the perfect and errant, given by inspiration, word of God, the final product of the seven purifications. Okay? is English. You use this, the English, to translate into other tongues. You don't go to the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay? Those were stepping stones to arrive at this. Okay? The Bible isn't in there. Word of God? Sure. Sure. Word of God? Sure. Absolutely. That's a little bit more open uh, open uh, than, you know, than scriptures. But Paul says, what's that the scripture? Within the scriptures. It's a no-brainer for me. But like I said, I'm not going to look at anyone lesser if you want to use those terms. No. No, no, because we have bigger fish to fry. But see, I was personally convicted of this. And I am called to be not only to preach and teach, but to be an example. And what the Lord convicted me of, I'm going to stick to it. I'm not changing. I'm being narrow-minded. I'm being stubborn. Yes, I'm not going to change it. The Lord convicted me of it. And this is what I live by. Okay? So you can go ahead and accuse me of subverting and uh, drawing people away from the true Christ of the Scriptures all day and all night if you want to, dear friend. But that is simply not true. And what the Scriptures talk about subverting is turning people away from the true gospel, usually by going to trying to keep them under the law, whether it's uh, the Old Testament law or of the law of men like Catholics. Okay, that's what it means to subvert according to scripture. So that is going to be it for this video. See, not just over an hour. Okay, just over an hour. Got big videos coming. Uh, brethren, please pray for us. Please pray for us. Uh, we need all the help we can get. Okay. 
you know, you're not going to, the only one who can stop me is the Lord. The only one who can stop me is the Lord. And because my enemy has not succeeded against me, there that means that the Lord is for, for me. Okay? You're not going to stop me unless, unless it is of the Lord. And so far, I'm still here. Hope this helps you, and this, uh, this, hope this clarifies, clarifies. This is the only time I'm going to address this video in, address this in this fashion, okay? In this fashion. I'll probably make many a reference to it in future videos. Yes, probably. But in this fashion alone, it's the only time I'm going to address this. Okay, you have a question about me, you have an accusation, you're going to get this video. Okay, so thank you to those of you who help us, who pray for us, who love us. Thank you. We need all the help we can get. We need all the prayers we can get. Okay, we need to get out of this place and we will one way or another. See, our home is one. Having one head, the Lord Jesus Christ. And what he will do, he will do. So, gotta go. Hope you guys have a wonderful start of your week. We love you and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.